Hello students and welcome to Smart Kids Tutorials. In this video, we'll be solving the model question paper for the academic year 2024-2025, semester 1, maths paper, class 9, which will be held in November uh, for 3 hours and uh, marks are 80. And quickly, we'll go through the instructions first. Very important to read the instructions before you answer the paper. So first instruction, it says, this question paper consists of 55 questions. All questions are compulsory. So when you have this paper in hand, you should the first thing you should see is whether you've got 55 questions or not. If anything is missing, you should report it to the teacher that is supervising your examination. Second, the question paper is divided into four sections, A, B, C, and D. Look out for that. Accordingly, there are marks allocated for this each section. In section A, question numbers 1 to 40 are multiple choice questions carrying one mark each which are to be answered on an OMR sheet. The OMR sheet will shall be collected after 90 minutes. In section B, question numbers 41 to 47 are short answer type questions carrying two marks each. So first one is OMR sheet will be given and uh, it's one and a half hour after one and a half hour you'll have to submit this paper the next section be going to be a rule pa uh, pages uh, first one section b has got two marks each section c question numbers 48 to 53 it will be for three marks each section d question numbers 54 to 55 will have four marks each there is no overall choice, however, an internal choice has been provided in three questions of two marks each in section B and two questions of three marks each in section C. So it says overall there is no choice, but uh, within the questions there could be a choice. The three questions it's saying uh, of section B, which will have a choice between themselves, and two questions of in section C will have choice. In questions on constructions, the drawing should be clear and exactly as per given measurements. The construction lines and arcs should also be maintained. Very, very important. Sometimes we have a habit. Once we draw, we erase certain lines and arcs thinking that it is not significant at all. So those are very, very important for the teacher that is correcting your paper to know that you have uh, followed, the, follow, followed the proper procedure in order to construct the given triangle or a circle, whatever um, construction is there. Graph page will be provided on request. Okay, so if you, uh, if you have a graph, uh, if you have a question which will be in linear equations, uh, there is uh, you have to draw a graph. Then you you can ask the teacher who is supervising. You you may be provided on request. Use of calculator is not provided. So you cannot take a calculator for the examination. So these are the list of instructions that you need to follow and you need to remember while answering this particular paper. So let's begin with uh, section A which is of one mark each and remember there are 40 questions each, uh, 40 questions of one mark each and this you will have to answer on an OMR sheet. Now in OMR sheet we will have like four circles or four squares and you may have to fill it with your pencil or your pen. The instructions will be provided uh, later on. Okay, but you'll have to fill those blocks based uh, with, I mean, depending on which, uh, whichever choice you think is the correct one. Okay, like for example, here yeah, the first one, there is a question and there are four choices, right? And then on the OMR sheet also, you will have this A, B, C and D. That's all. Okay. And you will have to, if there is circle next to A, you'll have to fill that circle. If you feel that is the correct choice. Uh, your teacher will uh, explain to you how to fill up the OMR sheet in the class. So I will not stress much on that and just focus on solving the questions. Okay. So remember, this is just a model paper. Uh, you are supposed to uh, pattern your study based on this model paper. So... A similar question will, a uh, similar uh, paper will come in similar with similar question. Does not mean the same questions will come. You, c the paper could either be difficult or it could be easier, or it depends. Say, whether it is difficult or easy depends on from one student to another. Okay, so 
let's just begin this paper. So first question is the number a upon b, where a and b are integers, is not a rational number if b is one of these. So important question, uh, important thing for a rational number uh, with respect to the denominator. Now b is a denominator and that is in question. Is that it should be, it can it should be a non-zero integer. So that means it can't be zero because once it is zero, then it becomes not defined. It can be minus one, it can be one, and it can be ten also, but it can't be zero. Then in that case, it does not become a rational number because the first definition that you see come across of rational number in your textbooks will be that it is a non-zero integer where p upon q where q is not equal to zero. So this is your q actually. This should not be equal to zero. This is not a rational number if b is zero. Okay, so the correct choice would be b. The first one we will put over here is your answer. b is your correct because b should not be equal to zero. Okay. So that is the answer. So if B, so if B is zero, then it is not a rational number. So that is a, here we are asked. It is not a rational number if B is one of one of the choice. So that is zero. Second question. Turn this. Okay. Which of the following is an irrational number? So you see, so uh, well I can clearly see which one is not at uh, which one is an irrational number, but for your sake I will solve all four of them and show you that three of them are rational from here, uh, but one of them is an irrational number. So we begin with the f first one over here. So first one it says root five plus root five. I'll solve it over here. Yes, root five plus root five will give us 2 root 5. Clearly this is an irrational number. Okay, The first one itself you get and that is actually your answer. But I'll show you the other one. Why the others are not irrational. So you get root 5 minus root 5. So the second one is root 5 minus root 5. This will give you 0. And 0 is a rational number because 0 upon 1 is 0. And it's rational form. Root 5 into root 5. Now, root 5 into root 5 will give us 5, which is also a rational number. And then we have root 5 divided by root 5. So, root 5 divided by root 5. They will cancel out each other and give us a rational number, which is 1. So, clearly, E is our correct choice. Let's go to the third question and see what it is. The rational number, which has a terminating decimal ex expansion is which one? So, you know, when we have uh, came across this rational numbers and this de terminating decimal ex expansions, we are told that anything with uh, multiples of 2 and 5 will give us uh, a terminating decimal expansion. Anything apart from that will not give us a terminating decimal. So, clearly we can rule out 11, we can re rule out 7, and we can also rule out 3. That leaves us with 9 upon 8. That is our correct choice. So I'll write it down. Let's see 9 upon 8. And then I'll show you why it is like that. So 9 upon 8 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2. Okay. So 2 four, uh, two twos are 4. 4 twos are 8. Same thing as this. Now if I multiply the same thing 3 times with 5 in the numerator. And this 5, also I'll have to balance by multiplying the same in the denominator. I'm going to make this in 2 into 5, 2 into 5, and 2 into 5 as pairs. So when I do that, see, you will, you're wondering, if you're wondering, those who are wondering, from where this 5 came, okay, I'm just taking this 5. Why? Because I want to get it as 2 into 5 as 10. 10 into 10 into 10, that will give me, 10 into 10 will be, 100, 100 into 10 will be 1000. And once I get that, that means I'll definitely get a terminating decimal. So, if you want, you can divide and check it for yourself. Okay? And that is why I wanted 5 
in the denominator. How many fives? Why did I take three fives? Because there are three twos. So to have pairs of them. So that in order to, the reason I wanted three fives is because of this three twos. And because, so that I should get 10, 10, 10. And because I wanted those fives, I multiplied the numerator with three fives as well. And that's how I get a terminating decimal expression. So C is your correct answer. Let's move to the fourth question. The fourth question is the degree of a non-zero constant is one of this. Okay. A non-zero constant. So the constant should not be zero. It can be any uh, other number. It can, it can be uh, even negative. Okay, but it should be a non-zero constant. But I'll give you an example. What it means is this, a non-zero value. Mm. Three. Or four. Okay. Now, if you, I'll give you a better example so that you can understand. Let's say we take uh, 2x plus 3. Okay. Now this x has a power and that is 1. x raised to 1 is x. Here also there is a power of x. But there is no x you may say. Well, I can still write this as 3x raised to 0. Okay. So now you can see an x. But it is raised to 0. And remember, anything raised to 0 is 1. So in other words, 3 into x raised to 0 is 3 into 1, which is 3. We can write this as 2x plus 3. And this is what they're calling as non-zero constant. So in, in that case, the power should be, or the degree should be what? Zero. Now, when it comes to the degree of a polynomial, it looks as the highest power. So here the highest power is 1 because 2x raised to 1 is there. In case of just 3, here. Now the highest power is what? Zero. So that is why... The degree of a non-zero constant, this can be regarded as a non-zero constant. Polynomial is zero. A is our correct choice. Fifth question. The zero of the polynomial 5 upon 3x is one of these. So, when it comes to zero of a polynomial, so, can take, so if you take px is equal to 5 upon 3x, Okay, is your polynomial in x, and if we take the polynomial is becoming zero, that means five upon three x equal to zero. Okay, that is a. Now, if you take the five upon three on the other side, denominator will go and multiply on top and become numerator, and numerator will multiply down and become denominator. So it will become something like this: x equal to zero into three upon five. But 0 into anything is 0. So that means x is equal to 0. So that means poly, uh, polynomial, the 0 of this polynomial is 0. So C is our correct choice. I'll write over here C and we'll move to the sixth question. Okay, let's look, have a look. What is the sixth question? It says the equation of the x-axis is given by one of this. So the equation of the x-axis is given by y equal to 0. Okay. So this you should check out. It is y equal to 0. And so the correct answer is B. Okay. See when you have your x-axis and y-axis here. This is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. So, equation of x-axis, okay? So, on x-axis, y is what? And anything on x-axis, y is what? Has to be 0. If the point is here, okay, on this line, that means y is 0 because y is here. If it is here somewhere, then you have a y and you have an x, okay? But when it is on the x-axis, then y becomes equal to 0. So, that is why? It, the correct answer is B, Y equal to 0. Next is the seventh question. A graph of linear equation in two variables is not a circle, not a semicircle, 
not a curve but a straight line this you should know so this is a straight line that means our correct choice is d and usually the straight line is given as y equal to mx plus c or in simple uh, format it is you can write it also this way 3x plus 3y equal to 6 the equation of a straight line next question question number 8 if 3 comma minus 2 lies on the graph of 5x plus ky equal to 11 then the value of k is what simple you just need this is x comma y that means in place of x you will put 3 and in place of y you will put minus 2 over here and then you'll get the value of k so we'll do that we'll write the equation first that is um, 5x plus ky equal to 11 okay and since we have got the uh, point as 3 comma minus 2 and put it over there so in place of x i'm going to put 3 and in place of y i'm going to put minus 2 equal to 11 5 into 3 is 15 minus 2 into k is sorry minus 2k equal to 11 and I'm going to take minus 2 or k on that side, bring 11 on this side. So, signs will change 15 minus 11 equal to 2k. This will become 2k equal to 4 cancels and we get k equal to 2. So, that is our answer, which means c is the correct choice. Ninth question, the relationship between sine theta, cos theta and tan theta is one of these. So, the relationship between sine theta, cos theta and tan theta is this sin theta upon cos theta is equal to tan theta okay sin theta upon cos theta is equal to tan theta let's look what is our choices first one is sin theta plus cos theta is equal to tan theta no sin theta minus cos theta equal to tan theta no sin theta into cos theta equal to tan theta no sin theta divided by cos theta equal to tan theta that's what we want sin theta divided by cos theta equal to tan theta which means d is our correct choice coming to the 10th question the value of 10 square 30 is what now what is 10 30 that is important 10 30 degrees is 1 upon root 3 now if you square this that means this also will get square and we will get 1 upon 3 as the answer so 10 square 30 degrees is equal to 1 upon 3 let's look with choice B is our correct choice. So we'll write over here B. Okay. So at this point, I would like to remind you for those who do not have this model papers for line standard, I will be putting up this model paper <coughs> on um, our WhatsApp channel. I will be providing a link to a website also. Where you can probably download the paper from there as well. So if you go to the WhatsApp channel, that the link will be there in the description bo box below as well as the website link you can download uh, the paper uh, from there in the pdf format or in the uh, jpeg format and uh, try solving this on your own also please do subscribe to the channel and like this video because it motivates me to do more uh, videos like this uh, for you in the future okay so let's move on to the next set of questions question 11 in triangle ABC, if angle A equal to 4x degrees, angle B equal to 24 degrees, and angle C equal to 36 degrees, then the value of x is one of these. So we are given in the triangle, we are given the three angles of a triangle. So we know that sum of all uh, three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So that's the property that we are going to take. So in triangle ABC, we can say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so sum of all angles of a triangle and that is equal to 180 degrees. Angle A is given to us as 4x degree. Angle B is given as 24 degrees. Angle C is given as 36 degrees equal to 180 degrees. Now, 4x degrees and 24 plus 36 that comes to 60 degrees equal to 180 degrees so when i take 60 on the other side it will become 
negative and 180 minus 60 will give us 120 degrees. So this we can then divide. 4 ones are 4, 4 threes are 12, 0. So x is equal to 30 degrees is our answer. From our options, A is the correct option. That's what we're going to write. A over him. Next, question number 12. The complement of an angle 5, uh, sorry, 58 plus A degree is what? Okay, complement means this angle plus another angle should be equal to 90 degrees. So, uh, we have to choose from um, one of these. Now, we can rule out these two options because these uh, this is above 90 degrees. So, that means these are referring to supplementary angles. So, we are asked for complement of an angle. So, either 32 plus A or 32 minus A, okay, when we add it to this particular angle should give us equal to 90 degrees. So, we'll find out what is uh, the angle. So, uh, let's try the first one and see. So, as I said, ang angle A plus angle B should be equal to 90 degrees. That is complementary angles. Okay. So, we are given one angle. Let's say the first angle in place of A is 58 plus A degree. Okay. And let's see the second angle. So we, we are left with only two options. This one, A or C. We'll try the A, whether it is uh, A, that is 32 plus A degrees. If this comes equal to 90 degrees, that means the choice A is the correct option. We'll see. So we get 58 plus A plus 32 plus A. If we add this to 58 and 32, that will give us 90. Okay, 90 degrees. Plus, it will give us 2A degree. So, this is not 90 degrees. This is something more. Because we don't know the value of A. A could be something more. Okay, 1 degree, 2 degrees, or knows how many degrees. That will add to the 90 degrees and then it will no longer remain complementary. Let's try the next option. That is, it's got to be this option. 32 minus A. Degrees. So, 58 plus A degree, which is given to us, plus, I told you, this angle plus the another, the like other angle, which is in our option, should give us 90 degrees. 32 minus A will come. 32 minus A degree. So that means 58 degrees plus A degree plus 32 degree minus A degree. 58 plus 32, once again, will give us 90 degrees. A plus A and minus A becomes zero. That means what remains behind is just 90 degrees. That means 32 AM, 32 minus 8 degree is the correct option. So, C is our correct option. Let's write C. And we go to question number 13. Question number 13 says, If angle RTM is an exterior angle of triangle RST, where angle R is equal to 70 degrees, and angle S is equal to 25 degrees, then the measure of RTM is one of the choices that I give. So, first we'll draw the triangle to have an idea what is this question talking about. RST. So, RST, this is a triangle. Okay. Angle R, it says, is 70 degrees. Then angle S, it says, is 25 degrees. And then it's talking about RTM. So, there would be, it would be something like this. Okay. And this would be M. Okay. And what it wants is this. Now, RTM is exterior angle. Okay. Now, it's asking for this. Now, as per the exterior angle theorem, it says this plus this should be equal to this. So, angle R plus angle S should be equal to angle RTM. So, angle R is what? 70 degrees. Angle S is 
25 degrees. That should be equal to angle RTM. So, angle RTM, when you add this to, it will come to 95 degrees. And so, our correct option would be C. 14 question in the figure, this figure. If P is the midpoint of AB, angle CAP is equal to angle DBP. Then the congruence rule by which tri triangle APC is congruent to triangle BPD is what? Okay. Now, put down these two triangles. So, triangle, it's asking about so we'll say it's asking about triangle APC and triangle BPD. Now what is given to us is angle CAP is equal to angle DBP. That is given to us. Okay. These two angles are given to us. Then what else is told to us? It says P is the midpoint of AB. P is the midpoint of AB. That means AP is equal to PB. AP is equal to BP. Since P is midpoint of AB. What else? If you look at this figure, APC is vertically opposite to DBP. That means they are vertically opposite angle. That means this angle should be equal to this angle. So we can write that angle APC is equal to angle. Uh, this is uh, BPD. Okay, so equal to angle BPD. We say vertically opposite angles and therefore we can say that triangle APC is congruent to triangle BPD. BPD. How? We've got an angle, we've got a side and we've got an angle. Okay. So you have a look over here. So we've got uh, angle, side, angle. So ESA will be the correct choice. So B is our correct choice. So by ESA, that means B is our correct option. 15th question. If the largest side of a triangle is 12 centimeter, then the other two sides can be one of these. Okay. So, the la largest side of a triangle is 20, 12 centimeters, it says, and the options over here are given. 15th question, if the largest side of the triangle is 12 centimeter, then the other two sides can be the choices. Now, uh, the trick over here is to know about triangle, a little bit about triangle. The triangle, what it says, the, the sum of any two sides should always be greater than the third side. Any two sides. Now, that may uh, include the two shorter sides. Now, this is the largest side. Even the largest side of a triangle should be the less than the sum of the other two sides. So, if this is 12, then the other two sides, which we will add up, the sum of them should be greater than 12 centimeters. So, let us see whose, which option gives us more than 12 centimeters. So, the first option is 7.6 and 3.4. So, if we add up 7.6 and 3.4, we will get this is 10, carry 1, 7 plus 3, 10, and 11. So, we rule out option A. What about B? Let us see. B is 6.4 and 2.8. 6.4 and 2.8. When we add them, let's see what is it is. 8 plus 4 is 12, carry 1. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So, we rule B out as well. Option C. 4.2 and 7.8. 4.2 and 7.8. We add them up. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry 1. 0 here. Point. 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 1 is 12. This is exactly uh, the equal to the uh, third side, the largest side. 
but it should not be equal. It should be greater than that. So we rule this one as well. Let's see D what it is. 4.8 and 8.2. 4.8 and 8.2. If we add them, let's see what we get. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. So this should be our correct option. The sum of the two sides is greater than the third side which is the longest side or the largest side as given here so d is our correct option <coughs> 16th question it says if both diagonals of a parallelogram are equal then it is a trapezium a kite a rectangle a rhombus first of all it says a parallelogram if it says a parallelogram Two things you should know about parallel. That the opposite sides are parallel and equal. Trapezium, we don't have opposite sides parallel and equal. One pair of opposite sides is parallel and another pair of opposite sides is equal. So, uh, this is, uh, uh, we rule out trapezium. In parallel graph, both, uh, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel and equal. Kite, no, because in kite also we don't uh, have um, the opposite sides, um, you can say, are not equal. So we rule it out. So we are left with rectangle and rhombus. But in rhombus, we know that the diagonals of a rhombus are not necessarily equal. Okay, so we rule rhombus out. That means it's rectangle because in rectangle, the diagonals are equal. So C is our correct option 17th question the value of the polynomial p of y equal to 2y cube plus y square minus y add y minus 1 y equal to minus 1 is one of these so we'll write down the polynomial first that is p of y equal to 2y cube plus y square minus 1 now it says add y equal to minus. That means in place of y, I'm going to put minus 1. So 2 in place of y, I put minus 1 cube plus minus 1 square minus 5. Let's see what we get. Minus 1 cube is minus 1 itself. 2 into minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 whole square is plus 1. So plus 1 minus 5. So Minus 2 plus 1 gives us minus 1. Minus 1 and minus 5 gives us minus 6. Let's see our options. So, we have minus 6 in our option. So, B is our correct choice. Write it down as B over here. Question 18. A solution of the equation 2x minus y equal to 5 is one of these. So, the um, thing to note is when which whatever values are given over here. In place of x, when you substitute and in place of y when we substitute in the left hand side of this equation the value that we get should be equal to the right hand side which is 5 in this case so let us try out each one of them and uh, see which one gives us equal to 5 that is the, our correct choice so this is the 18th question write down the equation first 2x minus y equal to 5 and we'll try out the left hand side for each case so first one is a which is 2 comma 1 so in place of x i'll put 2 and in place of y i'll put 1 2 2s are 4 4 minus 1 which will give me uh, 3 but this 3 is not equal to the right hand side so we rule out option a uh, option b is uh, 4 comma minus 3 so once again left hand side and 4 comma minus 3 I'll write over here so in place of x we put 4 and in place of uh, y we put uh, minus 3 so this will become 2 into 4 is 8 minus and mi into minus gives us plus so that gives us 11 which is also not equal to right hand side so we rule out the option b as well then Let's try option C. Option C is uh, x equal to 4. So, left hand side, once again. No. Sorry, sir. 
I showed you the wrong option. It is uh, 1 comma minus 3. So 1 comma minus 3. So in place of x, I put 1. And in place of uh, y, I'll put minus 3. So 2 into 1 is 2. Minus into minus is plus, plus 3, which is equal to 5. And this is equal to our riches. So C is our correct option. And because we've already got one option that it matches, uh, we need not check out uh, for option D. Okay. Question 19. The equation of a line parallel to x axis and four units above the origin is one of these. Now, we have a look what it means to say is we, we have this x and y axis over here. So this is your y axis and this is your x axis. Four units uh, above the origin. So this is your origin. Four units above the origin means towards the top. Now it says it is parallel to x axis. That means it is like this. Okay. Which means that your y axis will have some value. And four units above that means this is in the positive quadrant of y. So that should be y equal to 4 as the answer. And so we'll write over here y equal to 4. And so the positive answer, uh, sorry, the correct answer should be Z. So D is our correct option. Going to question 20. The value of sine 26 degree minus cos 64 degrees is what? This is complementary angle. So sine 26 degrees minus cos 64 degrees. So we can write sine of 26 degrees as sine of 90 degrees minus 64 degrees. Because 90 minus 64 gives us 26 degrees. And we'll leave this cos 64 the way it is. Sine of this can be written as cos of 64. Cos of 64 is complementary over here. Okay. So cos of 64 minus cos of 64 degrees. And that gives us 0 as our answer. Let's look at the option. So we have 0 in our options. E is the correct option okay so with that uh, we finished 20 questions of the mcq so that means we are halfway through the mcq and which we which means we finish 20 marks okay once again uh please do subscribe to the video the more you subscribe the more motivation i get to make such videos for you and do share this video with your friends as well as classmates because you should be aware of what type of paper you are going to get for your board exam. Okay. So let us uh, continue further from here. Question 21. The zero of the polynomial 3x plus 7 is this. So to find out the zero of any polynomial. So if the polynomial p of x is equal to 3x plus 7 and we say polynomial of that particular. Uh, in that particular variable is 0 that means that 3x plus 7 is equal to 0 so you take 7 on the other side it will become 3x equal to minus 7 then 3 is into x so you take 3 on the other side get divided so x equal to minus 7 upon 3 uh, this is your answer or the 0 of this particular polynomial which means that when you put this fraction in place of x this polynomial will become 0 so minus 7 upon 3 means E is the correct choice. Put E over here. You know, the question number 22. Next question. Question 22. The simplified form of uh, minus 1 upon 27 whole thing raised to minus 2 upon 3 is what I decided now. We'll solve that. Minus 1 upon 27 in bracket. Uh, whole thing raised to minus 2 upon 3. Now, when we have to solve this, this is negative. So, we want, we have to make it positive. So, positive uh, will mean that the we have to take the reciprocal, which means the denominator will go into the become the numerator and the numerator will become the denominator. Something like this. Okay. Minus 27 upon 1 can be written as minus 27 itself. And this will become then positive 2 upon 3. Then, minus 27 can be written as 3 raised to 3, whole thing raised to 2. Because if you remove the factors of 27, you get 3 9s are 27, 3 3s are 9, and 3 1s are 3. 
So 3 raised to 3 cube. Okay, so that's what I've done. 3 cube. Minus sign remains the way it is. Do not forget the minus sign. Now this, using your exponential laws, you can write this as 3 minus 3 raised to 3 into 2 upon 3. This 3 will cancel each other. We are left with minus 3 square, which is minus 9. So our correct option would be A minus 9. Okay. Question number 23. It says if x raised to 51 plus 51 is divided by x plus 1, then the remainder is one of these. So let's solve this. x plus 1 divides x raised to 51 plus 51. Now, the usual way of division is x raised, uh, we need to cancel out x raised to 51. So, multiply it with x raised to 50. That will give us x raised to 51. Okay. And then we, 1 into x raised to 50 would give us plus x raised to 50. I change the sign and what will happen is this will cancel out and we will we'll get x raised to 50 plus 51. Now, this is a long division, but if you apply logic over here, common sense, then what you see over here is if you continue this way, what you will, you will end up with a division, which will be your divisor will be something x plus 1, which will remain the same. But your division would become the final dividend would be x plus 51. And then you put 1 as your quotient and you'll be x into 1 would be x, 1 into 1 would be plus 1. Change the sign throughout. This will cancel. 51 minus 1 would give you 50 as the remainder. And you are asked for the remainder, not for the quotient. So, uh, understand this is something over here. You don't have to do the entire division. You just have need to have that understanding. x plus 1, when you divide with x raised to 51 plus 51, you will get x raised to 50. Begin with that. And then your next... Uh, dividend would be x raised to 50 plus 51. If you continue going like this, you will always get an x variable with a 1 power less. Finally, you will come down to the point where you will be left with just x and 51. When that happens, you divide it with 1, when your quotient will be 1, okay? x into 1 will be giving you x and 1 into 1 will give you 1. That is the only time when we will be able to uh, solve for 51 over here. So 1 into 1, otherwise it will always be 1 into some variable. Here there is a constant. 1 into 1, we can definitely minus this. 51 minus 1 will give you 50. And then your division stops. It can't go any further than that because there's no more variable left. And what options they have given is this 0, 1, 49, 50. So, we've got 50 over here. So, that means D is your correct option. Question 24. The simplified form of 1 upon square root of 9 minus square root of 8 is one of these. Let's solve for this. We have 1 upon square root of 9 minus square root of 8. Now, square root of 9 is uh, 3. So, you can straightenly write this. You can say 1 upon 3 minus 8. Then what we need to do, sorry, 3 minus square root of 8. Now what we can do next is rationalize the denominator. So that we do 3 plus square root of 8 upon 3 plus square root of 8 with the sign being changed from minus to plus. Then we multiply and we will get the numerator will be 3 plus square root of 8 will take upon 3 whole square minus square root of 8 whole square. So, we, then we get 3 plus square root of 8, whole thing upon 3 minus 8. Sorry, 9 minus 8, because it is 3 square, 9 minus 8. This will become 3 plus square root of 8 upon 1, which is just 3 plus square root. Now, here you do not have 3 plus square root of 8, 
but you have something like 2 root 2 in 3 places. That means the answer should come in 2 root 2. The square root of 8, we can write it as 3 plus 2 root 2. How 2 root 2? The square root of 8 can be written as square root of 4 into 2. Square root of 4 is 2. What it remains behind is square root of 2. So that's why this is 2 root 2. Or 2 root 8, 2 root 2. So 3 plus 2 root 2 is our answer. Let's look which correct option. Uh, D is the correct option. 3 plus 2 root 2. Question number 25, have a look, it says if a upon b plus b upon a is equal to minus 9, where a comma b is not equal to 0, and it means both a and b are not equal to 0, then the value of a cube minus b cube is one of these. Okay, so let's solve this one. So, here we are asked for the value of a cube minus b cube. Now a cube minus b cube is an identity. Well, let's write down what is that identity. So a cube minus b cube is equal to a minus b into a square plus b square plus ab. You can also write a square plus ab plus b square. So this is your um, identity. Okay. Um, now we write this as 1 and we will go to solve what is given. A given a upon b plus b upon a is equal to minus 1. We will write that so a upon b plus b upon a equal to minus 1. And solve this. When we remove the LCM, we get a square cross multiply a square plus b square whole thing upon ab equal to minus 1. We take AB on the other side. It will multiply with the minus 1. And we will get A square plus B square equal to minus AB. So minus AB I will bring on the left hand side. And so minus AB will become positive AB. So A square plus B square plus AB equal to 0. Okay. That is what we get over here. Now, mark this as 2. If you notice over here, we've also got a square plus b square plus ab. Okay, over here. But we've got the value of a square plus b square plus ab equal to 0. So, you can say substituting 2 in 1, we get. So, the value of this is 0. And that I'm going to substitute in place on this. So, write a cube minus b cube equal to a minus b, okay, into 0. The whole thing becomes 0. Anything this a minus b into 0 gives us 0. Anything into 0 is 0. That means a cube minus b cube is equal to 0. That is the answer. Right, let's look at the options. So, d is our correct option. Next question, if x minus 2 is a factor of x square plus 3ax minus 2a, then the value of a is one of these. So, when it says that it is a factor, that means when you put that value in the polynomial, it becomes 0. So, if we say p of x is equal to x square plus 3ax minus 2a, okay, this is your polynomial. And we take uh, your uh, x minus 2 is a factor itself. That means x minus 2 equal to 0, x will become equal to 2. P equal to 2, okay? And that is equal to 0. When we put this value in this polynomial, the polynomial becomes 0. But uh, what uh, what is the polynomial that we will put over here? The value of 2, wherever there is x, we will substitute with 2. So, 2 whole square plus 3 into a into 2 minus 2a equal to 0. 2 square is 4 plus 3 into 2 is 6. 6a minus 2a equal to 0. Okay. 6 minus, so I will take uh, 4 on the other side. And 6a minus 2a gives us 4a. And when I take 4 on the 
right hand side it will become minus 4 4 and 4 divide and we are left with a equal to minus 1 let's look at the options so b is our correct choice minus 1 Question 27. If x plus 1 is a factor of ax raised to 4 plus bx cubed plus cx square plus dx plus e, then answer is this. So, same thing. Uh, do. So, x plus 1 equal to 0. Take, and that will get x equal to minus 1. Now, this minus 1 we play, put in place of uh, the variable that is x in this polynomial. So, p of x equal to we write ax ax raised to 4 then plus bx cube plus cx square plus dx plus e and then we take p of minus 1 equal to 0 which means where e minus 1 all square plus b minus 1 cube sorry this is raised to 4 not full square then plus c minus 1 whole square plus d into minus 1 plus e. Okay. Then equal to 0. Sorry. Minus 1 raised to uh, 4 is positive 1. So this will become a. Minus 1 raised to cube will remain minus 1. So minus 1 into b gives us minus b. Minus 1 whole square become positive 1. Positive 1 into c gives us positive c minus 1 into d gives us minus d plus e equal to 0 now whatever is minus we'll take it on the right hand side and we are left with a plus c plus e equal to b plus d and we have that option here a plus c plus e a plus c plus e plus equal to b plus d so that means e is our correct option Question 28. If x equal to 2 and y equal to minus 1 is the solution of the equation 2x plus 3y equal to k, then the value of k is. So, in place of x, you substitute 2. In place of y, you substitute minus 1. And we'll get the value of k. So, we write 2x plus 3y equal to k. And remember, x is equal to 2. y is equal to minus 1. 2 into 2 plus 3 into minus 1 equal to k which is 4 minus 3 equal to k 4 minus 3 is 1 so that means k is equal to 1 so our correct option is a which is 1 question number 29 question number 29 says the present age of a is 3 years more than the thrice the present age of b if the present ages of a and b are x and y years respectively then the algebraic equation representing the given situation is one of these okay so it says present age so present age of x okay is sorry of a of a is x and present age of b is y okay no what it says, the present age of A is 3 years more than thrice the present age of B. So, the present age of A, okay, is 3 times 3 years more, sorry, 3 years more, that means plus 3 years more than thrice the present age of B. That is what it means in terms of A and B. But in terms of x and y, what does it mean? A is x. Then B is y. Okay. So we end up getting x. If we bring 3y on the left hand side, it will become minus. We get x minus 3y equal to 3. So x minus 3y. Do we have x minus 3y? Okay. No, we don't have x minus 3y, but we have minus 3. So, just rotate this around. So, we minus 3y, I'll take it rather, cancel this. I'll keep 3y where it is. And I'll bring my uh, 3 
on the left hand side. So I'll get x minus 3 equal to 3y. Okay, so instead of bring 3y on the left hand side, we don't have 3y on the left hand side, negative 1. So leave 3y where it is, but take minus uh, positive 3 on the left hand side, which becomes negative. And we get x minus 3 equal to 3y. Let's see if we have this x minus 3 equal to 3y. So that means b is our correct option. Question number 30. Okay. Question number 30 says, in the given figure, line segments CD and AB intersect at O, angle ACO equal to 80 degrees, angle BDO equal to 70 degrees, and angle COE equal to 40 degrees. Then the value of X and Y, the X plus Y is one of these. Now, in both the cases, we can use the external angle theorem. See, this plus this is equal to this. So, we'll get x, okay? If we have this, we can use vertically opposite angle and get this one. So, once you get this angle, this angle plus this angle is equal to this angle. So, once we get x and y, we can easily add them up. So, let's begin. So, see that uh, angle ACO plus angle AOC. Angle ACO plus angle AOC is equal to x degrees, okay, or angle x. We can say uh, this is through external angle theorem, okay. Angle ACO is, ACO is 80 and AOC is 40. So, 80 degrees plus 40 degrees equal to x degrees. That means x is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, so this is one. Next, we say angle is AOC is equal to angle BOD. Angle AOC is equal to angle BOD. That means it is equal to 40 degrees. And this is because it is vertically opposite angles are equal. Vertically opposite angles. Next, uh, so angle BOD we get. Now angle BOD plus angle ADB, okay, is equal to this y by external angle theorem. So, angle BOD plus angle ODB is equal to y. Again, external angle theorem. Hmm? Now, angle BOD is 40 degrees and angle ODB is 70 degrees. 70 degrees equal to y, which means y is equal to 110 degrees. This is 2. Now, if we add 1 and 2, okay, adding 1 and 2, we will get x plus y, which is equal to x is 120 degrees, y is 110 degrees. That means x plus y is equal to 230 degrees. And that means our correct choice is c. c is our correct Choice. Question number 31 says, in the given figure, angle MNO is equal to 2 times angle NOM. NQ is the bisector of angle MNO. That means it bisects this angle and this angle. And MN is equal to PO. Therefore, uh, triangle MNQ is congruent to one of these triangles. Now, if you have a closer look at the triangles that are given to us, you will notice this angle, uh, triangle QQPO and then triangle POQ and then the triangle uh, o, yeah, OQP. Okay. And then there is another triangle which is a triangle NQP. Now this is another triangle but all these are this triangle. Okay, all these choices that are given in this triangle. That means our correct choice should be within this triangle itself and not this one. So we should be looking to focus on these two triangles. And we have also been given that this side MN is equal to this side PO. That means trying, it's already trying to tell you that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. But which one? Okay. Though they are in the same three-sided figure, uh, the triangles are different because it 
because of the sides. Okay. So we will have to see. Now what we have been given here is MN is equal to PO. Now we have triangle MNQ, right? So if we take if this is MN, then then this MN side should correspond to PO. So I'm just saying, without even trying to solve this, that we our correct choice should be triangle POQ because MN is equal to PO. But still, uh, I'll solve it and we'll really see whether MN is uh, sorry triangle MNQ is congruent to triangle POQ or not okay so i've already drawn a diagram here so that it will become easier for me to explain while i solve the problem uh, we have we start with what we have been given we have been given that triangle angle m n o is equal to two times angle n o m this is given to us okay but we know that m uh, that this uh, n q is a bisector of m n o so that means it's bisecting this full angle into two equal parts. So this angle plus this angle should be equal to each other. So what I'm going to say that angle instead of putting MNO, you can say two times angle MNQ is equal to two times angle NOM. How did I get two times angle MNQ? See MNQ is actually half of this full uh, angle because they are equal angles here. Okay. So if you, if anyone does not know how I've got this to make it simpler for you, I'll solve it over here itself so you can see it. See, angle MNO can be written as angle MNQ plus angle QNP. Okay, QNP. Fine, agree? This full angle can be written as this plus this full angle. But we know that this NQ bisects uh, angle MNQ. That means this angle is equal to this angle. And that's why we what we can do is angle MNO can be written as MNQ. MNQ. And instead of QNP, we'll write MNQ again because they're equal to each other because it is getting bisected. And so MNQ and MNQ give us two MNQ. MNO is equal to 2 times MNQ. And that's exactly what I've done over here. I've replaced MNO with 2 times MNQ. Okay. Because of this angle bisector. So, we can cancel this 2 and we will get angle MNQ is equal to angle NOM. So, MNQ equal to angle NOM we get. Okay. So, this we can mark as 1. Okay. Similarly, if we can write also uh, QNP, angle QNP also we can write equal to angle NOM or we can write it as NOQ also. So, I'm going to write it as NOQ equal. Okay. You can do the same thing. I'm trying, just trying to short, cut it short because uh, it is only for one mark. It is not for four or five marks. Okay. Uh, so just trying to solve and show you over there uh, how it is. Okay. So same way we can get QNP equal to L or Q uh, if we try that thing. Uh, Q uh, and P. I'll do it at the side. Okay. Just in case if you're confused how I got that. So Q and P. Uh, sorry. From here I'll take. We know that angle MNO equal to angle MNQ plus QNP. Right. Now, here what we did was we replace in this step, we replace QNP with MNQ because they are equal to each other. But instead of this step, I can write angle MNO as equal to angle QNP plus angle QNP. That will become two times angle QNP. So that's how I wrote Now you will wonder that should have been angle NOM, not NOQ. NO m or n o q is the same because when we look at an angle we look at the letter in between this okay these are the arms of that particular angle so this is the angle we are focusing on why did i take n o q you will learn soon why did i take n o q and not n o m i'll mark this as two okay now look at this uh two angles okay 
um, that we have got over here. This two, okay. What we have got in this Q and P is this angle, and NOQ is this angle. In which triangle? Q and P. We will say in triangle. Uh, sorry, not Q and P. Q and O. Q and O. This big triangle. This big triangle. In this two big triangle, we've got this angle as equal to this angle from here. Q and P equal to angle N O Q. Okay, that is the reason I was taking. Now, because these two angles are equal, we can say that the opposite sides are also equal. Okay, we can say uh, that uh, therefore. Uh, NQ or QN is equal to uh, OQ. Okay. Opposite sides are equal. Okay. Opposite sides of a triangle. Because opposite angles are equal, so the sides opposite to those angles are also equal. So NQ is equal to OQ. Mark this as 3. Okay. Now, we look to prove these two triangles are congruent. I am going to take in triangle M N Q and triangle P O Q, and uh, we have got what M N Q? We have got angle M N Q as equal to angle uh, M N Q equal to P O Q. We can say P O Q. From where? From here, because this angle is equal. We've uh, got M N Q is equal to N O M. Okay. So, from 1 we can say, is the same angle. And uh, we have got uh, this uh, NQ as equal to OQ from 3. So, from 3 we have got that equal. Plus, we have been given at the start, um, we were told over here that uh, NM is equal to PQ. So, that's what I'm going to write over here that uh, NM is equal to PO, sorry, not PQ, PO. So, I'm going to write over here that uh, MN equal to PO. So, we what we have got in these two triangles, we've got a side, we've got uh, an angle, and then we've got a side. So, you can say, therefore, triangle MNQ is congruent to triangle POQ by SAS congruence rule. And that's how it is. So it is POQ is a correct choice. So that means our correct option was uh, B. B is our correct option in this. Okay. Let's go to question number uh, 32. And it says the value of sine square 70 degrees plus the sine square 20 degrees minus 2 cos square uh, 90 degrees is one of these. So, uh, let's uh, have a look. So, uh, I'll just write it down first. So, question number 32. It says sine square 70 degrees plus sine square 20 degrees minus 2 cos square 90 degrees. Now, cos of 90 is what? Cos of 90 is 0. Okay, so we write that uh, equal to this. Okay? And what I'll do is, this sine square uh, 70, I, uh, I'll keep it like that only, sine square 70 degrees. But the sine square 20 degrees, I can write as sine square of 90 degrees minus 70 degrees, complement. And minus 2 into 0 whole square, which will become 0, of course. Then this we can write as sine square 70 degrees plus sine of uh, 90 degrees minus 70 degrees, we can write as cos square 70 degrees, complementary. And uh, cos square 70 degrees, and this will be, of course, 0, so I don't have to write this. This is sine square theta plus cos square theta. Since the angles are the same, we can use the identity, and so this will become 1. Okay. So the correct option over here will be D. We'll write D over here, and move on to the question number 33. Question number 30 is, if sine 2a equal to cos of a minus 45 degrees, where 2a is an acute angle, then the value of a will be one of these. So, let me write this. So, sine 2a equal to cos of a minus 45 degrees. 
So this uh, we can write sine 2a, we can be written as uh, cos of 90 degrees minus 2a equal to cos of a minus 45 degree. Get rid of this and we are left with 90 degrees minus 2a equal to a minus 45 degrees. So 45 degrees I will bring this side, minus 2a will take it that side. So both will change sign and both will become positive. So we will get 2a plus a equal to 90 degrees plus 45 degrees, which means we get 3a equal to 135 degrees. This can be cancelled. 3 4s are 12, carry 1, 3 5s are 15. That means A is equal to 45 degrees, which means our correct option is C. C is our correct option. Question 34 ABC is a right triangle, right angled at B. If AB is equal to 10 centimeters and angle C is equal to 30 degrees, then the uh, length side BC is one of these choices. So, if we have a triangle drawn like this, and it is saying it is right angled at B, so B should be here, we'll put A here and we'll put C here, this is right angle, and it says AB is equal to 10 centimeters, so this height is 10 centimeters, and the angle that is made is 30 degrees, okay, 10 centimeters. So, we are asked for side um, BC in this case and but we are given uh, are we given something over here so this is what we're given to uh, since we need bc we have been given a b we can use a trigonometric ratio that involves these two sides and that would be 10 so 10 uh, angle is given so we'll use 10 30 okay why 10 30 remember i'm taking 10 uh, 10 because a b is given and we need bc so, all these two sides are involved when we uh, think, uh, when we consider 10. And why 10, 30? Because the angle is given as 30 degrees. So, 10 of 30 degrees can be written as AB upon BC. So, AB, that is opposite side upon adjacent side. Okay, so this is the side. Uh, 10 of 30 degrees we know is 1 upon root 3. And uh, AB is given as 10, BC is what we need to find out. So, this will cross multiply and we will get BC equal to 10 root 3 uh, centimeter. Let's see, see. Yeah. So, B is our correct choice. Move on to question 35. Question 35 says if one angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the other two angles, then the triangle is... Uh, one of these. Now, this is one angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the other two angles. Then the angle is the same. So, uh, the angle which we are considering, the, if the total angle should be uh, 180 degrees of a triangle. Okay. So if we take a triangle, let's take this triangle itself. So, if we, if we take any two tri uh, triangles, okay, uh, I'm sorry, if we take a triangle, then the sum of this angle, this angle, and this angle has to be uh, 180 degrees. Do not consider this as 90 degrees or 30 degrees. I'm just using this triangle to explain this question. So, this angle plus this angle plus this should be 180 degrees. Now, it says one angle is equal to the sum of the other two angles. So, in that case, then that particular angle can't be acute. Okay, that one angle can't be acute. Acute means less than 90 degrees. Can it be more than... Um, uh, 90, uh, 90 degrees <coughs> okay so it can't be an obtuse angle also because uh, if we uh, see uh, let's see if this angle was 100 uh, 91 degrees okay let's see 91 degrees. that means uh, the other two you have to also understand that uh, the other two angles should be uh, such that when we add them, it should become 180 degree. So, that will not happen, okay? Because the other two will become, if this is 91 degrees, one angle, okay, let's say A, then the other two angles of B plus C will become 89 degrees, okay? Has to be 89 degrees. But it says this should be equal to the sum of the other two. That means it has to become 
45 plus 46. Okay, but if we have 45 plus 46, it will give us 182 degrees. And we know the sum of all angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So that means we can rule out obtuse angle also. What about right angle? Yes, right angle is possible. 90 degrees is equal to 45 plus 45 degrees. Okay. So this one angle is equal to the sum of the other two angles. Possible. What about uh, 60 degrees? No, it's not uh, uh, possible. 60 degrees, that means total what will remain is 120 de uh, degrees. So that means it has to be 60 plus 60 this is not equal to this. So, not equal. This is equal. This is also. So, um, the correct choice in this case is that it should be a right angle triangle. So, C is the correct choice. The question 36. In the given figure, AB divides D angle DAC such that the angle AB, this one, divides angle DAC such that CAB is thrice the measure of DAB. Uh, if AB is equal to DB, so these two sides are equal, and angle EAC is equal to 100 degrees, then the value of X is one of these. So, if we begin first with CAE and DAC. We can say angle CAE plus angle DAC equal to 180 degrees by linear pair action. CAE and DAC. This angle plus this angle total is 180 degrees. But we have been given CAE is 100 degrees. So, I'll put 100 degrees here. An angle DAC will remain like that, 180 degrees. And you take 100 on the other side, it will become negative. 180 minus 100 gives us 80 degrees. So, angle DAC equal to 80 degrees we got. So, this full angle DAC, but we can write angle DAC as equal to this uh, two angles. That is uh, CAB, angle CAB plus angle DAB, angle DAB. Now, DAC is 80 degrees, so we put 80 degrees here. C, A, uh, we have also been given that, let me look over here, that, um, here, this one, CAB is thrice measure of angle DAB. So, I'll replace angle CAB with three times angle DAB. And this DAB, I'll keep it the way it is. Now, this 3AB plus 1A DAB becomes 4DAB. So, 4 times angle DAB is equal to 80 degrees. Cancel this and we'll get 20 degrees. So, that means angle DAB equal to 20 degrees. So, now we know this DAB is 20 degrees. So, this implies that angle CAB which is 3 times angle DAB. So, 3 into 20 degrees will give us 60 degrees. So, angle CAB is 60. So, now we know this is 60 degrees, this is 20 degrees. Okay. We have also been given that AB is equal to uh, DB, right? Here we can. AB is equal to DB. Okay. But AB is equal to DB. So, we can say the angles opposite to these sides are also equal. So, that means angle uh, BDA is equal to angle DAB. So, that means they both equal equal to 20 degrees. So, that means this is also 20 degrees. Now, you can say in uh, triangle uh, ADC, this full triangle ADC, what we can say is that angle ADC plus angle AC D is equal to angle C A E by external angle theorem. Okay, I'll show you how. Angle A D C. A D C means this is A D B, 20 degrees. 
ACD means this angle ACB, X degrees. Okay, so ADC, I am going to put as 20 degrees. ACD will be X degrees. Equal to CA. CA is 100 degrees. Okay, so this is external angle theorem. This so this angle plus this angle is equal, the sum of this angle plus this angle is equal to the sum of this external angle. So 20 when we take on the other side become negative 100 minus 20 gives us 80. That means x is equal to 80 degrees. So it is a correct answer. And so correct choice or option is C. And this is C. Question 37 in the given figure xy is parallel to PQ. In angle AEF equal to 80 degrees and BXQ equal to 120 degrees then the value of K is one of these. So let's write down first one. So we'll start first with okay. these two angles. So we have been given BXQ equal to 180. So BXQ plus angle BXG Okay, BXG equal to 180 degrees. How? By linear pair axiom. So, linear pair axiom applies for this angle plus this angle. BXQ is 120 degrees. So, 120 degrees plus BXG, which we need to find out, equal to 180 degrees. We take 120 on the other side, become negative. 180 minus 120 gives us 60 degrees. So, BXG is equal to 60 degrees. It marks this as 1. Then we have been given as this angle is 80 degrees, right? But we have been given that these two are parallel lines. So this angle should be equal to this angle because these are corresponding angles over here. So we can say angle, um, let's say AEF, AEF equal to angle EGX, EGX equal to 80 degrees. Why? Because they are corresponding angles. Okay. I'll mark this as, uh, no, mark this anything. EGX. So, um, EGX and uh, we'll take uh, BGX. These are linear pairs. So, angle EGX plus angle BGX, BGX equal to 180 degrees in linear pair axiom. EGX we've got as 80 degrees. Angle BGX equal and equal to 180 degrees. When we take 80 degrees on the other side, it becomes negative. 180 degrees minus 80 degrees gives us 100 degrees. So BGX is equal to 100 degrees and this is 2. So now we have got this angle this angle in this entire triangle and now it is easier to find this so we say in triangle bgx okay this particular diagram bgx we can say that uh, angle bgx plus angle uh, we can say bxg bxg okay is plus angle GBX, GBX equal to 180 degrees because sum of all angles of triangle is it should be equal to 180 degrees. Now BGX we have got as 100 degrees. Then BXG, BXG we got as 60 degrees. Put 60 degrees here. GBX is your K, sorry. K, it is not X, K, which we need to find out, okay, and uh, equal to 180 degrees. So, 100 plus 60 gives us 160. 160, when we take on the other side, it will become negative. 180 minus 160 gives us 20 degrees. So, K is equal to 20 degrees is the answer. So, let's let us look at our choices. So, that will be A will be the correct option and mark this as A. Next we come to question number 38 and it says if the angles of a coordinate taken in order are in the ratio 3 is to 7 is to 6 is to 4 then the coordinate is a one of these. Okay, so we don't know what that coordinate is. 
will draw a four sided figure okay and uh, let's see we'll give it uh, a name say a then uh, and give it a b c and d okay uh, so a will be 3x b will be 7x c will be 6x and d will be 4x okay since it is given the ratio we take as 3x 7x 6x 1x so 3x plus uh, 7x plus 4x plus 6x all should be equal to 360 degree. sum of all angles of a quadrilateral is 360 we add 3 plus 7 is 10 and 6 plus 4 is also 10 so 10 plus 10 gives us 20 so we get 20x equal to 360 degrees okay so this 0 0 cancels and then 2 into 18 gives us 36 so that means x is equal to 18 degrees now to find out each angle so 3x means 3 into 18 degrees that gives us 54 degrees that would be our a then um, 7 into x that would be 7 into 18 that would give us 126 degrees that would be b so this is uh, 54 degrees this is 126 degrees then we have 4x so 4x is 4 into 18 and that gives us 72 degrees this would be 72 degrees and then we mark this as c and then we have um, 6 into x so 6 into 18 that gives us 108 degrees so that would be d this would be 108 degrees now if you notice carefully the sum of these two become 180 and the sum of these two also become 180 degrees okay but the sum of these two don't become 180 and these two don't become 180 what i'm trying to imply here is here these are interior angles which are supplementary if we consider these two lines as parallel these two are not parallel otherwise these also would have become 180 degrees so what are the choices that we have been given uh we have been given a choice it's a rhombus no it is a not a rhombus we can rule out rhombus opposite angles are not equal okay parallelogram again opposite angles should have been equal not equal so we rule out parallelogram trapezium and a kite kite also we can rule them out okay not uh, uh, trapezium yes why because we opposite angles are not equal but one side only is uh, parallel so trapezium is this way okay so you see angles have got nothing but the, you can see this angle these two lines are parallel that means these two should be the sum of these two should be 180 and the sum of these two should angles should be 180 degrees so trapezium is the correct choice way so that would be c so c is our correct choice in this case Question 39. In the given figure, points A, B and C are the midpoints of sides PQ, QR and PR of triangle PQR respectively. If the perimeter of triangle PQR is 4 cm, then the perimeter of triangle ABC is one of them. Okay. So, we are given that A, B and C are midpoints. A is the midpoint of PQ. B is a midpoint of QR and C is a midpoint of uh, PR and we are given that uh, the perimeter of triangle PQR is 4 cm we are asked to find the perimeter of triangle ABC now we, when we say perimeter that means it is the length of the side so PQ plus QR plus PR is equal to 4 cm what we need to find out is what is AB plus BC plus CA equal to that will be one of the choices that are given over here what we need to work with is the fact that we have been given that this point is a midpoint of this this is a midpoint of this and this is a midpoint of this and when it comes to midpoints we know that when we have two points that uh, when we have a line that is joining two midpoints of a triangle that is 
uh, then the, that line is parallel to the third side of the triangle. So AC should be parallel to QR. Also, that this line should be half of this line. So AC should be half of QR. Same thing if we take for this triangle. Uh, I mean, uh, this line over here. And look at this triangle. So in that case, uh, we would say, have a look at this triangle this way. Wherein this is, uh, these are our mi uh, two midpoints. Uh, this um, B and A. Then in that case, we have this triangle, same triangle, but now in this case, we have this line, we, which will become half of this line, and also this line will be parallel to this line. Then again, if we rotate this triangle further, then what do we have? Then we have this particular line, that is B and C, making BC, and this line will be half of this line, that is PQ, and BC will also be parallel to PQ. So all round, if we rotate, we get the same thing. I'll show you. I've drawn a figure over here. So, uh, the theorem is that if we have uh, a line that is joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, and then that line is half of the third uh, line of the triangle and also parallel to that particular line. So, as per the theorem, we should get uh, uh, we are interested only in the half part, not the parallel part. So we can say in case of this one that AC is half of QR. We can also say, so this is one. We can say this is one. Uh, we can say then if we rotate the triangle, then we'll get here AB. AB we can say is half. So AB, the tr uh, triangle will be this way. And so this will be the line. It's half of PR. And we'll call, mark that as second. Then we come to the third one. That is BC. So BC is here. So this will be the line. So BC we can see is half of PQ. Uh, and this will mark as third. Okay. Now. We can take this. Uh, now, we, uh, what we have been told, we have been told that PQ plus QR plus PR is equal to 4 cm. This is what we give the perimeter. Okay. Now, PQ, we have established a relationship between PQ and BC. Now, BC is half of PQ, that means PQ is 2 times BC. So, 2 times BC plus, same thing applies here, 2 times AC plus 2 times a, B, we can say is equal to 4. And this will be from 1, 2, and 3. Hmm? Now we can take 2 common over here. So if we take 2 common, what we are left with is, inside the bracket we are left with B, C, plus A, C, plus A, B, equal to 4. And this we can divide, and we will be left with 2 over here. And so we get over here as A, B, plus BC plus AC equal to 2 centimeters. And that's what we know. That is the perimeter of this triangle ABC. Therefore, the triangle of the, uh, per, uh, uh, of the uh, tri uh, perimeter of the triangle of ABC is 2 centimeters. So, the correct option is B, 2 centimeters. Mark that over here. Question 40, last uh, question of section A of the MCQ section. Uh, R E S T is a rhombus if angle R T E equal to 3x minus 2 degrees and angle T E S equal to 50 minus x degrees, then measure of angle R is one of these. So, to draw a rhombus over here, so R E S T and uh, it says R T E is equal to 3x minus 2 degrees and it says. TES is equal to 50 minus x degree. Okay. No. Uh, we are asked to find angle R. Now, this is a rhombus. That means opposite sides are parallel to each other. It becomes a parallelogram. So, if this is a parallelogram, these two R lines are parallel. This becomes a transversal. That means 
and this particular angle that is given RTE should be equal to TES. So we'll write just that. Question number 40. Angle RTE is equal to angle TES and this is because it's alternate interior angle theorem. Uh, RTE is given as 3x minus 2 degrees and TES is given as 50 minus x degree. Okay. So we'll uh, take, uh, we'll make sure that x is on one side and the other numbers are the other side. So we get uh, 3x, so when we take minus x on the other side, left hand side, it becomes positive. And when minus 2 is taken on the right hand side, it becomes positive. So 50 plus 2, I will get, this will be, sorry, 3x minus plus x. Then minus x comes to set. So 3x plus x will give us 4x. 50 plus 2 is 52. So we'll divide and we'll get x is equal to 30. Okay, so it's 13. So x is equal to 13. So that uh, now what we need to do next is put, let's find out what is angle RT. So angle RT is 3x minus 2. So in place of x, we'll put 13. And let's see what 3 into 13 is 39 minus 2. And that comes to 37 degrees. Now we can say that angle RTE is equal to angle ETS. Angle ETS. Why? Because diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angle. So this angle should, this particular angle should be equal to this angle. So the angle bisectors. So, okay, angle bisectors. Okay, so that means angle ETS is also equal to 37 degrees because RTE is equal to 37 degrees. So angle RTS, the full angle, angle RTS, we can say is equal to angle RTE plus angle ETS. So this angle plus this angle, okay. And that means it is 37 degrees plus 37 degrees, which is comes to 74 degrees. Now, because we said in this case that this is a parallelogram and we said that uh, this line is parallel to this line. So that means in that case, this particular angle plus this particular angle, okay, should be equal to 180 degrees. So interior angles are supplementary. So we can say angle R plus angle RTS is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, because interior angles are supplementary. Now, right over here, interior angles are supplementary. So, RTS we have got as 74 degrees. So, angle R will become equal to 180 degrees minus 74. That will come to 106 degrees. Okay. So, if this is one angle R is equal to 106 degrees, that is our correct choice is option is D. So, D is our correct option. So, with this, we complete uh, section A, which was of 40 marks, all MCQ questions, one mark each. Okay. So, at this point, I uh, would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed so far. Please share this video with as many friends and classmates who are going to appear for class 9 examination. It will help them also. And if you like watching the video, do not forget to hit the like button as well. Let's move on to section B. Coming to section B, two marks each. Represent root 2 on the number line. That is question number 41. Let's draw root 2. Now, uh, depends from one school to another. Root 2 and root 3 representing on the number line has been shown uh, with the protractor and some have learned to do with the compass. So, uh, in this video, I am going to construct uh, root 2 using the compass only, not with the help of the protractor. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, 
I've drawn a line. Now I'm going to mark where my zero is going to be. So I'll mark it over here. This will be my zero, one, two. Uh, that's more than enough actually. Mark minus one as well. This is three, four, five. And this will be zero, minus one, minus two. So minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. That's more than enough. Okay. Next, uh, I will draw a perpendicular from one. Okay, with the same measurement, keeping the pointer over here, cut this line here, and then the same over here as well. Then keeping so with the same measurement wherever the arc intersects this big semicircle, keep that, and draw another arc, and then. There itself with the other intersection, draw another one. Now at the point of intersection, we'll draw a line that will become our 90 degrees. So that's 90 degrees well. Now we continue further. So we cut one centimeter. So from here to here was already one centimeter. So we're going to take the measurement from here to here. And then on this line, I'll cut one centimeter. That's it. And mark the point. And from this point, I will join zero. Okay. So done. So we have one centimeter here, one centimeter here. And this becomes our root two. So we're going to measure that. Okay. Can you see? That's a measurement. Then I'm going to keep the pointer here on zero and cut an arc on this number line. That becomes our root. So you can mark this as root 2. So that's how you construct root 2 on the number line. Okay, That's it. This is for two marks. Question number 42 is a choice between these two. To factorize the following quadratic, poly, quadratic, poly, quadratic polynomial by splitting the middle term. So we'll do the first one and then we'll do the next one. So you can do any one of them. So first one is 4x square minus 11x plus 6. So 6 into 4 is 24. So 24, how do you get 24? Plus the middle term is negative. The middle term is negative and the constant term is positive. Okay. Uh, there's a mistake in the model paper. This is not 11x. This is, should be actually 10x. So, we split 6 with a 24, that means you can either get it by 6 into 4, or you can get it 12 into 2, or even 24 into 1. But, uh, we rule this out, because it's minus 10. This we'll have to rule out, because it will have to be minus 2 plus. But the thing is, the constant term is positive, which means both the middle terms have got to be negative. So, that leaves us with these two. So that means 4x square can equal to 4x square minus 4x minus 6x plus 6. So we take 4x common here. We are left with x minus 1. Here we'll take minus sign common and 6 also common. So we're left with x and the sign will change in between x minus 1. Take out what is common. So that is x minus 1 is common and we are left with 4x minus 6. So that's what we are asked to find out.
find the factors. So the factors are x minus 1 into 4x minus 6. Now for the second option. The second option says 5x square plus 12x minus 9. So that means 9 into 5 is 45. 9 into 5 we get 45. And which other way we will get 45? 15 into 3. Or we will get uh, 45 into 1. Uh, we can rule this out because it's 12. Okay. Now the middle term is positive. Uh, quadratic term is negative. That means 1 has to be the sign of the bigger number has got to be positive and the smaller number will be negative. So we, it has to be this. Because if minus 15 plus 12 will sorry, minus 15 plus 3 will give us minus 12. So 5x square equal to sign 5x square minus 15x plus 3x minus 9. We take 5x common here. If we take do that, we are left with x minus 3 plus we'll take 3 common here. And we're left with x minus 3 here as well. So we write x minus 3 into 5x plus 3. So these are the factors. x minus 3 into 5x plus 3. So that solves question number 42. Coming to question 43, factorize using suitable identities 27a cube minus 64b cube. So this is into a cube minus b cube formula identity. So I'll first write down the identity for those of you who do not know the identity. So a cube minus b cube can be written as a minus b into a square plus b square plus ab. You can also write it as a square plus ab plus b square. Comes to the same. Now we have been given 27a cube minus 64b cube. So this I can write it in this format as a 3a whole cube minus 4 4b whole cube. So a cube minus b cube. So 3 cube is 27 and 4 cube is 64. Now to write it, uh, now we'll expand this identity into this form and we will get 3a minus 4b and we'll get 3a whole square plus 4b whole square plus 3a into 4b. Close the bracket. Let's expand this further. 3a minus 4b and 3a whole square is can be written as 9a square. 4b whole square can be written as 16b square. And then 3 into 4 is 12 plus 12ab. This is the answer. So 3a minus 4b into 9a square plus 16b square plus 12ab. Let's move to the next one. Going to question number 44. There is a choice. First one is expand using uh, suitable identity 3x plus 5a plus 8z whole square. So this is an identity. Let's write down the identity first. So the identity is x plus y plus z whole square. We can write this as x square plus y square plus z square plus 2 times x plus 2 times y plus 2 times z. This is the identity. So let's um, f find out or uh, solve the identity that is, uh, problem that is given to us. 3x plus 5y plus 8z whole square. Let's expand this. So 3x whole square plus 5y whole square plus 8z whole square plus 2 times into 3x plus 2 times into 5y plus 2 times into 8z. And we get 9x square plus 25y square plus 64z square plus 6x plus 10y plus 16z. This is the answer. So, since there are two choices, we we'll put this as A and B it would be 103 whole cube. So, this we can get it into the A plus B cube format. So, what is A plus B, the whole cube identity? This is A cube plus B cube plus 3A square B plus 3AB square. 
So we have been given 103 whole cube. This can be written in, brought in this format. So as like this, 300 plus 3 whole cube. Now we'll use the identity to open this up. 100 whole cube plus 3 whole cube plus 3 times into 100. So 3a square b. This is your a, this is your b. Plus 3a b square. Okay. Now, let's open this up. So 100 whole cube. So since this cube this zeros will repeat. The pair of the zeros will repeat three times. So that means we'll get six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six zeros. Three whole cube is twenty-seven. Then three into three is nine. Hundred whole square, that means four zeros. So nine, one, two, three, four. Three into three square. That means three cube. That means that will be twenty-seven. Twenty-seven followed by two zeros. Now to add this is very easy. Let's use the units, tens, hundred places to add up. So there's zero in the units place. Here also there's zero. There's seven here, zero. So that means there will be seven coming in the units place. Tens place, there's a zero here, zero here, two here, two, zero. Two will come here. In the hundred place, there's seven here, zero. There's no hundred here. So that will be seven. In the thousand place, there's two here, there's zero here, nothing over here, here's a zero. So that means this will be two. Nothing is left over here. In the ten thousand place, there is nine here, nothing here, and here there's zero. So this is nine. Now this, this is done, this is done, this is done, and we are left with just one and zero. So we put one and zero here. And that is our answer. Okay, one zero nine two seven two seven is our answer for this one hundred and three whole. Cube. So we finished question number 44 in this way. Let's move to question number 45. So question number 45 is here. It says in triangle ABC, angle B is equal to 90 degrees. AB is 5 centimeters. BC is 12 centimeters, which means we'll have to find out AC. And uh, we have to find out the co cos C. So for cos C, we anyways need AC because it's a hypotenuse. So BC upon AC will give us cos C. So let's first find out AC using Pythagoras theorem. This is for two more. So we have been given, so in triangle ABC, we can say uh, by Pythagoras theorem, We can say that AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. So AC square we don't know. So AC can be written as square root of AB square plus BC square. So AC is equal to square root of, we said, Square root of AB square plus BC square. So AB is given to us as 5, so 5 whole square. And BC is given to us 12, so 12 whole square. So AC is equal to square root of 5 whole square is 25. And 12 square is 144. So 144 plus 25 gives us 169. 169. Square root of 169 is 13. So AC is equal to 13 centimeters and now cos C we can write as AB sorry cos C will be BC upon AC BC is 12 AC is 30 so cos C is 12 upon 30 so this is for uh, two marks okay uh, there's a choice over here so we've solved E and the choice other one was evaluate the following trigonometric expression using known trigonometric values of specific angles 5 10 square 30 degrees plus 3 sine square 45 degrees let's do that put b over here so 5 10 square 30 degrees plus 3 sine square 45 
degrees. Now, 5 into 10 of 30 is 1 upon root 3. 1 upon root 3 whole square plus sine sin 45 1 root 2. 1 upon root 2. So, we can write this as into 1 upon root 2 whole square. So, this will become 5 into 1 upon 3 and this will become 3 into 1 upon into 1 upon 2. Okay, in other words, this will become 5 upon 3 plus 3 upon 2. The cross multiplier will get the LCM. So, five. so we get 10 plus 9 upon 10. Okay. 2 into 5, 10, 3 into 3, 9, 10 plus 9, and, sorry, this would not be 10, 3 into 2, so that would be 6. So, the answer would be 19 upon 6 would be the answer for this particular question. Question 46, in the adjoining figure, lines A, B, C, D, intersect at O, prove that angle A, O, C, is equal to angle B O D. So, what we can say is angle A O C plus angle A O D is equal to 180 degrees because these two form linear pair action. So we say angle A O C plus angle B O D equal to 180 degrees linear pair action. And we mark this as 1. Now we can also say that angle AOD plus angle DOB or BOD is equal to 180 degrees because these two also form linear pair HL. So we can say angle, uh, sorry, we made a mistake. Angle AOC plus angle AOD. AOD I had to write, not BOD. AOD this is, okay. Angle AOC plus angle AOD, these two form linear pair, okay, not BOD. And then we write angle AOD plus angle BOD equal to 180 degree. Now this is a linear pair, again, a linear pair action. Mark this as 2, okay. Now we have shown that this angle AOC plus angle AOD is equal to 180 degrees. Also, we have shown that angle AOD plus angle BOD equal to 180 degrees. Okay. Now, since this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees, this angle plus this angle is also 180 degrees, that means these two angles should be equal from 1 and 2. So, if, if you want, you can uh, write an additional step over here that angle AOC is equal to 180 degree, 180 degrees minus angle AOD and mark this as 1. And similarly here also you can say angle BOD is equal to 180 degrees minus angle AOD. Okay, and then you can see from 1 and 2 we get angle EOC equal to angle B O D. Okay. Because A O C is equal to 180 degrees minus A O D and B O D is also equal to 180 degrees minus A O D. And therefore from 1 and 2 you can get angle A O C is equal to B O D. This is just for two marks. And that's how you prove it. Next question number 47. Question number 47 says that uh, triangle PQR is an isosceles triangle such that PQ is equal to PR and this ray PS is a bisector angle PQR that uh, QPR sorry QPR that means this angle is equal to this angle yeah. uh, we are asked to prove that this particular angle is equal to this angle but that is easy to prove all we need to do is show that these two triangles are congruent and once we show that these two triangles are congruent, then by CPCT we can show that this angle is equal to this angle because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. 
okay and to show that they are uh, congruent is fairly easy because we have been told that this side is equal to this side we have been told that this ps bisects this particular angle that means this angle is equal to this angle and we know that this particular side ps is common to both the triangle so we can easily prove it showing s a s that these two triangles are common let's do it now on paper so we can say in triangle uh, Q P S and triangle R P S. Okay, so Q P S R P S. Okay, we can say that uh, we have been given that P Q is equal to P R. And we can write this as given. Next, we can say that angle QPS is equal to angle RPS. Why? Because PS bisects angle QPR. This one. So QPS is equal to RPS, these two angles, because this PS bisects this full angle QPR. And we can say that PS is equal to PS. Okay? common side to both the triangles common side this one so we can say therefore triangle QPS is congruent to triangle RPS by SES congruence rule okay and we can say therefore angle Q is equal to angle R. Hence proved. That's how you prove it. So with this we come to an end of section B, which was for two marks each. Okay. Once again, uh, for those who you who are watching this video, I would ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Please do share this video with your friends as well as your classmates. Uh, it will be very useful for them as well. And uh, do like the video if you have watched, if you have liked watching the video. Let's move on to section C. Starting with section C, which is for three marks each. Question number 48. Draw the graph of the following Lignard equation in two variables. We are given the equation 2x plus y equal to Night. So we have to plot at least three points. Okay. So let's begin. So since we have to plot three points, we'll take three points. So let's say x equal to zero. So if we put it in two x plus y equal to nine, let's see what we get. Two into zero plus y equal to nine. Two into zero is zero, which means we get y equal to nine. So we can say when it is x is 0, y will be 9. Then we'll take uh, x equal to 1 and see what we get. So 2x plus y equal to 9. In place of x, we put 1 plus y equal to 9. 2 into 1 is 2 plus y equal to 9. Take 2 on the other side, it will become 9 minus 2. So y will be equal to 7. So you, that means when x is 1, y is 7. Now we'll take x equal to 2 and see what we get. So 2x plus y equal to 9. 2 into 2 plus y equal to 9. 2 into 2 gives us 4 plus y equal to 9. When we take 4 on the other side, it will become 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. So when x is 2, y becomes 5. So these are the three points that we are asked to plot on the graph. Now let's see what the graph is. So I've already plotted the graph and it looks something like this. So z, when x is 0, y is 9, so 0, 9. When x is 1, y is 7, so 1, 7. And when x is 2, y equal to 5, so 2, 5. Write the equation of the line. Do not forget to write the scale on x-axis, that is this, 
one centimeter is equal to one unit and on y axis you see one centimeter is also equal to one unit and this is how the graph looks full okay so do not forget to mark the x axis and the y axis and also the origin so this graph is for three marks next question question number 49 from section c in the given figure PQSR is a quadrilateral in which angle Q is equal to angle R, PS bisects angle QPR. Uh, we are asked to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So, which is fairly easy. We have done this before that uh, this line is common to these two triangles. We have been given PS bisects QPR, which means these two angles are equal to each other. And we are told that these two angles are also equal to each other. So that means angle, angle, side. By EES covalence, we get these two triangles as covalent to each other. So let's put it down over here. We say in triangle uh, PQS and triangle PRS. Okay. We say that... Uh, angle Q is equal to angle R which is given then we are told that uh, PS bisects angle QPR so we will say angle Q P S is equal to angle uh, Q P S so that means R P S R P S why since PS bisects angle QPR and we can say that PS is equal to PS this is common side okay so then we can say therefore triangle PQS is congruent to triangle PRS okay so this is how you solve this Coming to question number 50. Question number 50 says, given quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram and BD is a diagonal. Prove that AB is equal to CD and AD is equal to BC. This is question number 50. Okay. Yeah, question number 50. And there's, there are two choices, in fact. You can do either this one or you can do uh, this one. So, we'll solve both of them. First, we'll attempt this one. So, the way to solve this thing is to just prove these two triangles are congruent to each other. Once we prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other, by CPCT, we can say that those sides, opposite sides, are equal to each other since they fall into two different triangles. So, let's first begin by proving these two triangles are equal to, I mean, congruent to each other. We'll start with A, B, D and C, D, B. Okay. Let's start with this and let 50 A. So, this is the first choice. We say in triangle B, how uh, we say A, B, D, sorry. A, B, D and triangle C, D, B, we say that angle A, B, D is equal to angle C, D, B. How? By alternate interior, interior angles theorem. How does it become an alternate interior angles? See, because we are told that this quadrilateral is a parallel, that means opposite sides are parallel to each other. If AB is parallel to DC, that means this DB becomes a transversal. And so, alternate angle A, angle A, B, D will become equal to angle C, D, B. So, this angle becomes equal to this angle. So, we can also give a write down further that uh, since you can say, a, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, therefore, 
AB is parallel to DC and so forth. Okay. So we get that. Okay. So one of them. Next, we can say that uh, BD is equal to DB, common side. BD is equal to DB, say common side. And we can say angle ADB is equal to angle CBD. Again, by alternate angles theorem. Okay. And again, same thing you can do is ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay. Is a parallelogram. Okay. And in this case, uh, see here we are. We are taking ADB. ADB has E. A, now, if we twist it this way, I'll just turn it around, it becomes easier. We are saying AD is parallel to AD is parallel to BC. So, in this case, our alternate interior angle will be in this Z fashion. So, ADB, this angle equal to this angle. So, that means CBA or DBC. Okay, so this particular angle equal to this particular angle. Okay, so in that case, we that's what we say, alternate interior angle. So therefore, we can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. How? There's angle, the side, and there is angle. So by ESA congruence rule. Okay. Done. Now. What do we need? We need AB is equal to CD. That means AB is equal to CD. So we can say AB equal to CD. And we also need uh, AD is equal to BC. So AD is equal to CB. AD is equal to CB or BC is the same. How? By CPCT. Corresponding parts of congruent triangle. So in this way, we finish solving the first proof okay so either you can do this one or the next one which we'll be doing next so the next option is given that in quadrilateral pqrs diagonals uh, pr and qs intersect at o and we are asked to prove that pqrs is a parallelogram so to show that this uh, quadrilateral is parallelogram, we have to show that opposite sides are parallel to each other and they are equal to each other. So these two are parallel to each other and equal, these two are parallel to each other. Now, it's enough to show one of the sides are parallel, uh, one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal. How do we do that? The, uh, so what we need to do is we need to show these two triangles as congruent to each other. Then we need to show that this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle and this side is equal to this side. All by using CPCT. Once we do that, by converse of the alternate angle theorem, we can say that uh, uh, opposite sides are parallel. And similarly, we can say that this also will become parallel to each other. So if opposite sides are parallel and equal, we can say that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's begin first. So we say in triangle PQO and triangle RSO. Which triangles have we assumed? PQO, RSO. So see how, pay attention to how I've taken the triangle in the same fashion in which we, we will get our alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles always in the Z fashion. So, so that they should come corresponding to each other. I have taken PQO and RSO. Hmm? Well, let's begin further. You can say PO is equal to RO. And this is given to us. Then we can say that angle POQ is equal to angle ROS 
and you can say this is vertically opposite angles which one p o q and r o s so these two angles are vertically opposite to each other and we can say that q o is equal to s o which is given so it was mentioned over here p o is equal to r q o is equal to s o that's exactly what i've taken over here okay so now we can say that the triangle p q o is congruent to triangle r s o and we can say it is s a s by s a s congruence rule that these two triangles are congruent to each other now we can say that p q is equal to s r p q is equal to r s over here we can also say p q o angle p q o okay is equal to angle r s o so p q o is equal to a r um r s o so this angle is equal to this angle similarly we can take this angle equal to this angle okay so i will also write angle um q p o is equal to angle s r o so all these three we can say it is by cp ct so now we have shown that opposite sides are equal we have also shown that alternate angles are equal okay now we can say that uh, this diagonals act as transversal we can say qs and pr are transversals to pq and sr to pq and sr okay so you can say therefore pq is parallel to sr by converse of alternate interior angle theorem okay so we prove pq is parallel to sr similarly we can say similarly we can say or we can prove we can say say that ps parallel to qr which one ps is parallel to qr same fashion okay we don't have to show that again all over again therefore you can see quadrilateral pqrs is a parallelogram that proves it correct this is for three marks question number 51 it says given quadrilateral abcd uh is a quad uh, abcd is a quadrilateral in which pqrs are the midpoints of uh, the respective sides uh, okay and ac is a diagonal if uh, sr is equal to 5.2 cm and uh, qr is equal to 6.4 cm then it says find the length of ac then uh, pq and ps okay now here we will have to apply the midpoint theorem and uh, we'll see how it is done first we'll see in triangle adc which is triangle adc adc we see that this is uh, there are two midpoints s is the midpoint of this da and r is the midpoint of this cd okay so we can say sr is not only parallel to ac but sr is half of ac by midpoint theorem so we can say first we'll say that s is midpoint of ad and r is midpoint 
of DC. Okay? And therefore, we can say that SR is half of AC. Okay, and mark this as 1. And we can say SR is parallel to AC. Mark this as 2. And this we can say combine as a midpoint theorem. Okay. Now, moving uh, further, we can say also a triangle ABC. What well, is triangle ABC? So, angle ABC, we have got two more midpoints Q, which is the midpoint of BC, and P, which is the midpoint of AB. So, in that case, PQ will become half of AC, and also PQ will be parallel to AC. So, let's write this down. So, first we'll write down that uh, Q, this one, is the midpoint of BC, is midpoint of BC and P is the midpoint of AB and P is midpoint of AB. Then we can say that PQ is half of AC and also we can say PQ is parallel to AC. Mark this as 3, mark this as 4, and combine you can see that this is by midpoint theorem. Hmm? Now, we can see from 1 and 3, which is 1. 1 is SR is half of AC, and 3 is PQ is half of AC. So, both are equal to AC. That means you can say that SR is equal to PQ. Now, we have been given that SR is equal to 5.2 centimeter. That means PQ also becomes equal to 5.2 centimeters. And we are asked for PQ. So, that's done. We are done with one. We are left with AC and PS. Now, we can say that SR is half of PQ. Okay. SR is half of PQ. How come we can say? We can say from 2. So from 2. Why? From 2 and you can say from 2 and um, let's say 5. We can give this and from 2 and 5 you can say. Okay. Because SR is uh, SR is half of AC, okay, but SR is also equal to PQ, okay. So we can take SR equal to half of PQ, or we can take PQ is half of AC also, no problem in that way, okay. So you can say either ways, okay. So what um, rather what we do is uh, we've got SR is half of AC. That is uh, from 1, I would say, not 2, from 1 and 5. SR is half of AC and SR is equal to PQ, which means, I'll cancel this part and write that PQ is half of AC. Okay, C. SR is equal to P, SR is equal to PQ, we know, and SR is also half of AC. That means PQ should become equal to half of AC because SR is equal to PQ. Okay, so PQ is half of AC. Now PQ we know is 5.2 and that is half into AC. Now we take this 2 on the other side, it will get multiplied with this 5.2. We get AC is equal to 2 into 5.2 which comes to 2 2 is a 4 decimal point, 2 5 is a 10. So 10.4 centimeter, that is the answer. AC. So, we've got AC, we've got PQ, now we need PS. Okay. Now, we can say that uh, since PQ is equal to SR and PQ 
is parallel to AC. Okay. Uh, PQ is parallel. Uh, PQ is parallel. Uh, sorry, PQ is equal to SR from five, and from four and five we can say from four and five. Okay. Now we can say therefore quadrilateral PQ. RS is a parallelogram. Okay, because we have shown that uh, PQ is equal to SR and PQ is also pa parallel to AC. Uh, PQ, uh, PQ is parallel to AC and uh, AC is parallel to sorry. PQ is parallel to AC and AC is parallel to SR. So we can also include uh, two over here from Two, four, and five. Okay, we can say uh, directly. We can say actually, PQ is parallel to SR, not AC, but SR. Why? Because PQ is parallel to AC, but AC is parallel to SR. So PQ become should become parallel to SR. So from two, uh, four, and uh, not f yeah, and from five because we include PQ is equal to SR. We can say that the opposite sides are parallel or equal. That's why we can say that quadrilateral PQ RS is a parallelogram. All this is only because to show, therefore, we can say that QR is equal to PS. We can say QR is equal to PS. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So we over here, we are given. Q1 is equal to 6.4. So that means PS should become equal to 6.4 centimeters. You can write over here the reason. Opposite side of a parallelogram. Okay. So we need three answers. First one was here 5.2. Second one was here 10.4. And third one was here 6.4. So we finish with Question number 51. Question number 52 is a choice. Construct a triangle ABC such that BC equal to 7.5 centimeters, angle B equal to 75 degrees, and AB plus AC equal to 13 centimeters. And this is the second choice. So we'll do both. Let's do the first one. So we'll begin with BC equal to 7.5 centimeters. So we'll construct BC is equal. I'll draw a line. BC is equal to 7.5 centimeters. First, what we begin? So this will be 13 centimeters. So I'll do it over here. Okay. BC, 13 centimeters. We share. Okay. And now you should be able to see better. So. We have a look here. So let me begin here. Yeah. So we'll draw BC equal to seven centimeters first. Seven point five centimeters. Sorry, seven point five centimeters. Okay, that's seven point five centimeters. Mark this here. Here. And that's BC and that is 7.5 centimeters. Then we are asked to construct uh, angle B equal to 75 degrees. So from here 75 degrees. So I have to draw 90 degrees first. Let's draw 90 degrees so that would be here. Okay. Keep it here, so I do not change the measurements. I hope you know how to construct 90 degrees. Here, and then keep it over here. Construct 90 degrees. Okay, so since 90 degrees is not what we are asked, I construct it as dotted lines.
we are asked for 75 degrees. So only 75 degrees will be drawing this uh, thick line. Okay, so this is uh, um, 90 degrees. Then we will go to draw 60 degrees. So we have to draw an angle bisected to 60 degrees and 90 degrees. So this will be 60 degrees. Again, dotted lines. Here. That's it. That's 60 degrees. Now between the two, we will get 75 degrees. We take the measurement from here to here, just this small arc. That's it. And then we draw an arc here. We keep the white here. And we cut this arc. And wherever these two arcs intersect each other, draw through that point, we will draw a thick line. And this time, we'll draw a big line. So, okay. Angle. So I'll mark this arrow over here. That's a long line. There we are uh, said AB plus AC is equal to 13 degrees. So with the help of a compass, we'll have to cut 13 degrees, 13 centimeters, sorry, on this particular line. So we'll measure 13 degrees. If you can't measure 13 centimeters, sorry, uh, what you can do is Take 6.5 centimeters and then 6.7. Adding them, you will reach 13 centimeters. So I'm just going to measure 6.5 first. That becomes easier. So keep the pointer here. And then make a small cut over here. This will be 6.5. Mark this point. Okay, we need 13. So we have to interest in 6.5. But 6.5 plus 6.5 should give us 30. Keep the point here. And then cut another arc. And that is 13 centimeters. So right here, this is our 13 centimeters. So we can mark this as 13 centimeters. And from that point, we will connect C. Okay, so... Here we go. We have done that. Now, the next thing is to draw a perpendicular bisector to this line. Now, we can give it some name, like let's say Y. Anything you can give. Our next job is to draw a perpendicular bisector to this. So, for that, I'll just turn this thing around so that you can see. Okay. Now, to take, make sure that uh, the length is more than half of this if you want it you can take the measurement also over here and see so this is roughly around around 13 13 and a half so make sure you take at least seven centimeters okay and you can measure this or you can randomly take but just make sure that it is longer than uh, or half more than half of this length so i keep the pointer at here and then I draw an arc, draw a big one. Sorry, this went here. Measure this again. Okay, this. Let me see if this comes over here. Not bad. Okay, and here it's all right. below. And using the same measurement, I'll erase that part later on. Keep the pointer here at this point and cut those arcs, which you have just drawn. Here and here. And sit. Now through those two lights, we will um, draw a line. I mean through the two intersections. Um, 
mark this point here and mark this point here. You draw a line through that. You can draw a thick line. That's it. Okay. Now I turn this around again. No. Wherever this line cuts this line, mark that point, and that will be your A, and we'll join A to C. That will complete our triangle. There you go. Okay, that completes our triangle. You can check if AB plus EC is coming to 13 centimeters. And do not forget to mark the angle, which is uh, 75 degrees. So from uh, here to here, this is 75 degrees. Can you just check how much is this? It comes to 5. And this comes to 8. So that's 30 centimeters. So this is how you construct this triangle. First one. Next question. Uh, construct triangle PQR such that QR is equal to 6.5 centimeters. Angle Q equal to 60 degrees. And PR minus PQ equal to 3.5 centimeters. So first we'll draw QR equal to 6.5 centimeters. Okay, so draw over here, I'll do QR is equal to 6.5 centimeters here. Okay, well, this is Q and this is R and this is 6.5 centimeters. Do not forget to write the measurements. Okay, next we are asked to draw angle Q equal to 60 degrees. So we'll do 60 degrees here with the help of a uh, compass. So keep it right here. There you go. And then keep the pointer here. And cut this arc and that's 60 degrees. Okay. And disturb when you draw 60 degrees, it has to pass through Q, come down, as well as on top. So you what I mean. On top, and also below. Okay. Then, next thing we are told PR minus PQ is 3.5 centimeters. So we have to cut 3.5 centimeters on this slide. So I'll measure with the scale and the compass 3.5 centimeters and then keeping it on Q I'm going to cut 3.5 centimeters that's it mark that point over there 3.5 and now this I will join to R so R will be joined to this point here. Here you go. Done. Now, the next thing that we need to do is uh, draw a perpendicular bisector to this and gives uh, some name over here. Uh, we'll keep this as Y and maybe this as a D. Any letter you can. Draw a perpendicular bisector to DR. Again, the length should be, whatever length you're taking, should be greater than half of this length. Just randomly taking over here. Draw an arc here and an arc here. Okay. And then from D, without changing the measurements, cut here and a cut here. See, for those who do not know how to handle a compass, do not handle a compass here, here, anywhere, or with two hands or two fingers, okay? It should be held like this, on top. Keep it here 
and move it around. Okay, once, twice maybe. That's it. Don't keep on moving it around, around. Make sure you've got a sharp pencil. Okay, or a darker pencil. So now we have got uh, the two arcs intersecting and mark the points where they intersect each other so that we can draw the perpendicular bisector. So there you go. Do not keep the line restricted only till the point of intersection. It's a line. Can be infinite. Okay, that's it. So we have now drawn the perpendicular bisector. Now wherever this perpendicular bisector meets this particular line, mark that point, which is here. That is P. Now we can join P to R. Yes, yeah, so we to join P to R. There you go. That's it. And that completes our triangle. So, make sure you mark over here is 60 degrees. Okay. And also over here, since you've cut this 3.5 centimeters, 3.5 centimeters, now you can check if uh, PR minus PQ. See, that... And th this itself should show you that it is correct because PR should be greater than PQ. If your PQ is greater than PR, that means it's, the, what you'll get is a negative answer. Lens cannot be negative. So it has to be PR minus PQ and that should come equal to 3.5. Let's just check to verify. So here yeah, we have 6. Let's see how much we have got here. Here we have got uh, 2.5. Okay, so 6 minus 2.5 gives us 3.5. Said so. Okay, so that's it. Uh, done with this uh, triangle. This was an easier one. If you know to construct this, might as well go for this one. And done with this it's question number 52 for three marks. Next, we come to question number 53, which is the last question of section C for three months. Factorize the polynomial a cube plus 13a square plus 32a plus 20. Okay. So, just utilize this space over here. I'll write 53. And we'll write the question once again. a cube plus 13a square plus 32a plus 20. Okay. No. What we'll do over here is that a uh, we have got a cube plus 13 a square plus 32 a plus 20. So this a square a cube I'll keep the way it is. Okay. And this 13 a square I'll split it into plus, uh, plus a square plus 12 a square. Okay. And similarly this uh, 32 e square, I'll uh, maybe split it into here. Yeah. Uh, split it into 12 e plus uh, 20 a, sorry, 20 e plus 20. Okay, you see what I'm doing. Now here, in this two, we can take out a square common, right? I'm going to take a square common, I'm left with a plus one over here. In case of this, again, I can take uh, 12 common, and I'm left with a, uh, sorry, 12 a common, okay? I'm left with, uh, I'll write it down again, 12 a, so I'm left, if I take out 12 a from here, I'm left with a plus one again, and here, if I take out 20 common, I'm left with a plus 1. Okay. So if I take out, now we have got common, among all of them is a plus 1. I'll take that out separately. And then what we are left with is a square plus 12a plus 20. Now this is into quadratic form which we can split the middle term and get the other factors. So, a plus 1, so 
वन इंटू टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड टेन इंटू ट्वेंटी टेन इंटू टू सॉरी विल गिव अस ट्वेंटी एंड सिंस द मिडल टर्म इज पॉजिटिव एंड द कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म इज ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव एज मीन्स वो द टर्म शुड एड अप सो वी गे वी राइट हेयर ए स्क्वेयर प्लस टेन ए प्लस टू ए प्लस ट्वेंटी देन ए प्लस वन वेल हियर वी कैन राइट एस वी कैन टेक ए कॉमन बिटवीन दीज टू विल बी लेफ्ट विथ ए प्लस टेन हियर वी कैन टेक टू कॉमन विल बी लेफ्ट विथ ए प्लस टेन क्लोज द ब्रैकेट कंटिन्यू विथ ए प्लस वन एंड देन we can write a plus 10 is one factor which is common and what is left behind is a plus 2 so that is the solution of this first thing what we need to do is try to find out something that is common so a cube was left like that from 13a square it was split up into a square plus 12b square which means 1a square plus 12a square and 32a was split into 12a plus 20a because there was 20 over here we took a square common a plus 1 was left we took 12 a common a plus 1 was left and we took 20 common so a plus 1 was left. we took a plus 1 plus 1 which was common to all of them is separately outside we were left with a square plus 12 a plus 20 this we got uh, the factors for of this by splitting the middle term and the factors were a plus 10 into a plus 2 into a plus 1 that came from here and so these are the factor so this is what we were asked to we were asked to factorize this particular polynomial and this is way how we do it so with this we come to an end of section c um if you like watching the video please hit the like button do subscribe to the channel ask your friends and uh and also classmates to subscribe remember this is just your first term you will also need such videos for the second term so i will be making videos for the second term as well so if uh, do share this videos with uh, your classmates as well as friends so now let's move to the last part section d which has got only two questions four marks each coming to section d four marks each question number 54 triangle abc uh, triangle abc and triangle dbc are two isosceles triangles on the same base bc and the vertices a and d are on the same side of bc ad is extended ad is extended to to intersect bc at e this is what it means we need to prove that triangle abe is congruent to triangle ac e this so let's begin begin with uh, proof ab is equal to ac i'll say And also BD is equal to CD, and uh, since triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle, the mark this is one, and here you can say since triangle DBC is an isosceles triangle, mark this as two. What I've done is. Told AB is equal to AC and DB is equal to DC. This is what we are given. Okay. Now we say in triangle ABD and triangle ACD. Now which two triangles are we taking over here? Triangle ABD and ACD. These two triangles. We are saying in this that AB is equal to AC. Okay, from one from here, then we are saying that BD is equal to CD. We can see from two this one, and we can say that AD is equal to AD, which is common sine. So what I've shown over here, we are considering these two particular triangles. So this side is equal to this side. This side is equal to this side. Okay, because we already said this side is equal to this side because uh, it's just a straight triangle. This full ABC, and this side is equal to this side because DBC is also given as isosceles. 
So this side is equal to this, this side is equal to this, and this AD side AD is common to both this triangle. So we can say these two triangles are congruent to each other. So therefore, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD. How? By triple S congruence rule. Okay. Now that we have proved that the two triangles are congruent to each other, we can say that angle BAD is equal to angle CAD by CPCT and we'll mark this as 3. What are we saying? Angle BAD is equal to CAD. So these two angles are equal, say. Okay, now moving further, we'll take in triangle ABE and triangle ACE. Which triangles are we considering now? ABE and ACE. That's exactly what we need to show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. We can see that. AB is equal to AC and that is from 1. We can say that angle BAD is equal to angle CAD from 3. And we can say AE is equal to AE which is common side. Have a look. We are considering these two triangles now, ABE and ACE. We have already sh uh, showed that these two angles are equal. Okay, This side is common to both these triangles, big ones. And uh, we also said that uh, AB is equal to AC because it's an isosceles triangle. So this side uh, is equal to this side. These angles are equal to each other and this side. So uh, side angle side. So we can say therefore triangle uh, ABE is congruent to triangle ACE by SAS congruence rule. Okay, and that's all. We only had to prove that these two triangles ABE and ACE are, equal, are congruent to each other and that's what we have done. So that is uh, for four marks, uh, question number 54, okay. Coming to the last question of this so paper, so for four marks, construct triangle PQR such that angle Q equal to 45 degrees, angle R equal to 60 degrees and PQ plus QR plus PR equal to 11 centimeters. Measure and state the length of PQ, QR and PS, okay. So first we'll and draw a line which is 11 centimeters. Okay, and I'll explain it to you for those who do not know how to construct this particular diagram. I'll explain it to you how to do it. Okay, so first thing first that is 11 centimeters. I'm going to take it over here. Take a little here. Okay. There you go. So that is 11 centimeters. I'm going to name it X and Y. So this is for 11 centimeters. Next, we are told over here that uh, angle Q should be 45 degrees, angle R should be 60 degrees. So assuming that Q will be this side and R will be this side, so let's first target angle R, which should be 60 degrees. Okay. Sorry, Q, 45 degrees. First we'll do Q, then we'll do R. So whatever angle that it says in this type of uh, construction, if it is 45, now it is 45. So we need to uh, draw the angle which is half of this. Half of 45 is 22.5 degrees. And half of 60 is 30. So that's what we'll have to do. Hence, indirectly we get this, we have to get this two angles. So first, let us look at constructing 
22.5 and not 45. So for that, 22.5 is an angle bisector of 40, uh, uh, 45. And 45, of course, is as you know, is an angle bisector of uh, 90 degrees. So first we'll draw 90 degrees over here. Okay. We're going to construct 90 degrees first. So that will be dotted line because we are not interested in 90 degrees actually. Here you go. Keep the point compass here and another one. Draw one here as well directly. Keep the compass here and cut this out. Okay, now we'll draw the dotted line, which will be our perpendicular. Okay. There you go. The reason we are drawing the with dotted lines is because we are we don't really need this 90 degrees, but in order to get to 22.5, we have to do that. Next, uh, measure it from here to here, this arc, so that we can construct 45 degrees. There you go. We need to draw an arc like this, and then keep it over here. So, uh, bisecting that particular angle. So, you get 45 degrees now. Again, this has to be dotted line. Wrong X. There you go. That's enough. Okay, and now further bisecting this angle of 45 degrees will be from here to here. We have to measure. So, that's the measurement. Yeah. Draw an arc. And keep the compass here. And we'll cut this here. That's it. Here you go. Okay. I'll we'll draw a thick line from X moving straight here. So that will be our 45 degrees. Here you go. Sorry, 22.5 degrees, not 49 degrees. This will be 22.5 degrees. Mark this as 22.5 degrees. Fine. Done with this. Now, let's go to this side. And since it is 60 degrees, half of that we have to draw. So that is... 30 degrees. So this is easier. So let's do that. Draw it, draw it dark. Then with the same measurement, keep the compass where it intersects the line. Cut this initial. That gives us 60 degrees. So it has to be drawn from Y. And this will be Dotted lines again. So what we are doing right now is 60 degrees, but we need 30 degrees. Here you go. And now for the 30 degrees, we measure from here to here. We need to bisect this angle. Here you go, yeah, okay. Draw an arc, where we keep the compass here, and draw another arc. That should give us 30 degrees. Draw this a little bit thick. From Y. Y is here. There you go. And we mark this over here as 30 degrees. Fine. Now, next, uh, what we need to do, 
where these two lines, thick lines have intersected each other, that will become your P, this point. Okay? Now, but we still need to construct Q and R. So, for that, what we do is, we draw a perpendicular bisector to XP. So, let's do that. Write a perpendicular bisector to XP. Draw an arc here and one arc here. Just make sure your compass does not shake much. And from here, cut this arcs. That will be our perpendicular bisectors. Mark the intersection point. And then draw a line, thick line. Okay, you go. Okay, it's done. Next, um, we draw a perpendicular bisector to PY. So, take more than half. Here, here one. Then from P, give the compass on P, cut these two arcs. Alright, you can mark those points. Here one. And another one will be here. Draw a line through those intersections. That will be view your perpendicular bisectors. Done. Okay. Now, now that you have done that, you see this point here, this will be your Q, joint P to Q. Okay, go. And you see this point over here where the perpendicular bisector cuts this line, that will be your R. Okay, joint P to R. So that gives you your triangle. I actually triangle was so small. Just P Q R. So this Q should be 45 degrees. R should be 60 degrees. So you can measure and see it will be 45 degrees over here. It seems giving 45 degrees. And over here it will be giving around 60 degrees. Okay. You can mark over here as 45 degrees. And this would be 60 degrees. And that's how you construct this particular triangle. This would be for four marks. Okay. So with this, we come to an end of this uh, particular video on the model paper of class nine, uh, term one, a maths paper, for, uh, which is going to come uh, in October now, within a few days' time. Okay, so this was for 80 marks. Uh, let me know in the comment section how did you find this video. If you have liked watching this video, please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends as well as your classmates. Do not forget to subscribe. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to make such videos. You have to see. Uh, it takes more than the three hours that are uh, given to you by Goaboard to make such a video. We make the video, it's all about uh, ma making sure that it's the correct thing comes uh, uh, is uh, put forward. And also, uh, there's a lot of editing work that goes in the background. So, uh, it would be nice if, we, if you would subscribe to this uh, channel as well. Kind of motivates me to do more. And also do comment in the comment section if you need any particular video in the future. So, more such videos will be coming in the future. Now that you know, you will be shortly uh, answering uh, the paper. Uh, you will know what are the difficulties you face and uh, hopefully you can come up with uh, suggestions as to what kind of videos that you need in the future. So thank you for watching uh, this video and keep watching more such videos. Thank you and all the best for your exams as well. Thank you. Bye.